you may already be or are planning to become an e-commerce trading business, then one of the thoughts in your mind should be how does the accounting and tax work for e-commerce businesses? E-commerce often involves selling into multiple tax jurisdictions and sometimes with products being dispatched from multiple tax jurisdictions, creating a web of authorities that need to be reported to potentially. In this video, we will explore what exactly is e-commerce, what are the five main e-commerce accounting and reporting requirements, how could or should you structure your business for e-commerce trading, a brief look at bookkeeping for e-commerce businesses, a brief look at VAT for e-commerce businesses, and finally, self-assessment tax returns for e-commerce. Before I get into today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to make sure you're kept up to date with all of our latest content. This really helps us to produce more helpful videos and to get you real quality advice from real qualified accountants. The first e-commerce transaction is thought to have taken place in 1994 and involved the sale of a compact disc known as a CD by the well-known artist Sting. Fast forward 27 years or so and it would be hard to imagine a world without e-commerce as it has become more and more prevalent in our daily lives. Put simply, if your business engages in the sale of goods or services online where the transfer of funds is also made electronically, then the business would be involved in e-commerce transactions. Your business could be selling via its own website, selling directly on online platforms such as Amazon, eBay and Etsy, or possibly operating under a dropshipping model. All of the transactions recorded will normally be considered e-commerce. It is worth noting that due to the two-part definition that not all transactions that take place via the internet would be considered e-commerce. For example, where a business operates a website where customers can place orders, but the transaction is completed by making payment in store or in person, this would not be considered e-commerce. Before we continue with today's video, we're thrilled to be launching the Accounting and Tax Academy membership site this year. We'll be posting downloadable resources, tax tutorials, and exclusive courses that you won't find anywhere else. And the best part of it is, it's absolutely free to join. Head to the link in the description box below to find out more. Many of the e-commerce accounting requirements are the same as those for a traditional bricks and mortar business. However, with the ability to access an international market with relevant ease, there can be some additional reporting requirements to consider as well. Below is an overview of e-commerce accounting requirements that should be considered for your e-commerce business. We will look at each in more detail and how the accounting requirements may differ to those applicable to a more traditional small business later in this video. Number one is the setup. Should you trade as a limited company or as as a sole trader. Number two is the bookkeeping. Number three is the preparation of financial statements. Number four is the VAT considerations. And number five is the self-assessment tax returns. Now, this is not a definitive list of e-commerce accounting and reporting requirements, but more of a point to start from, which is fairly comprehensive. There will be almost certainly more points to consider, many of which will be dependent on your unique circumstances. Like all businesses, you will need to decide on a suitable structure and legal setup. This usually involves deciding between trading as a sole trader or a limited company in the main. Each has its own distinct benefits over the other, but depending on the size of your business, the activity that you undertake and your own personal preferences, there may be one that is more suited to your particular circumstances. It's highly recommended you do some research upfront and think about the optimum setup for you and your business. Changing the setup at a later date is certainly possible, but it will often result in further cost administration, not to mention some hassle. You can learn more about the differences between the two main business setups in our sole trader or limited company video by clicking on the card above where we also have a useful decision tool download to help you decide between the two different structures. Bookkeeping can be considered a bit of a burden for many solopreneurs and small business owners in the past, but fortunately accounting software such as Xero and QuickBooks, just to name two examples, are making this previously time-consuming task a lot more manageable, although it still takes time and effort. Bookkeeping is essential for your e-commerce business, and without it, you simply will not have a grasp of your numbers. Your raw data, that is your business transactions, normally money in and money out of your business bank account, is not the same as bookkeeping. bookkeeping 
Keeping will organize this raw data using what is known as the double entry system and translate it into readable and digestible management information to include an income statement and balance sheet at regular intervals of time, such as every three months. And remember, there is also a difference between accounting and bookkeeping, and the two should not be confused. The main function of bookkeeping, as already mentioned, is to organize raw data into a format that is understandable and digestible to you and the management, whereas the main purpose of accounting is to present and report the financial information in a way that meets all of the business's legal requirements. We've done a video in itself on the salient differences between bookkeeping and accounting, which you can access by clicking on in the description box below. The requirement of your business to prepare financial statements will depend on the legal setup that you settle on. A limited company is required to report on its financial performance by preparing and submitting annual accounts and company tax computations and returns. It would then need to report some of this information to both HMRC and Companies House. There are strict guidelines detailing what information should be included and how it should be presented. A sole trade, on the other hand, would only be required to report financial performance via the annual self-assessment return, which only requires the individual to provide figures detailing total income and total allowable expenses. This process is therefore considered to be less time consuming, although some sole trader businesses may opt to prepare more structured financial statements to help them better understand their own numbers. Now, this is where it gets perhaps both interesting and complex for an e-commerce trading business. Up until this point, the e-commerce accounting and tax requirements have been comparable to that of a more traditional business model. When it comes to VAT though, the e-commerce accounting requirements and amount of red tape can increase dramatically for some e-commerce businesses. First and foremost, as with any setup, if your business exceeds the current VAT registration threshold in a rolling 12-month period, then your business will need to register for VAT. It is also possible to register voluntarily for VAT if the business taxable turnover is below the threshold. If you want to find out how to make an informed decision on VAT registration, click on the link below for our video, the top four benefits of VAT registration. For you e-commerce traders, firstly, there is a difference in the way VAT works between goods and services. Secondly, you have to distinguish any supplies of either goods or services you make between B2B, that is business to business, or B2C, that is business to consumer. The former are supplies to other normally VAT registered businesses, no matter where they are based, and the latter are supplies to individual customers who are not VAT registered, usually via online marketplaces such as Amazon, eBay, or Etsy. And thirdly, the treatment of VAT for e-commerce businesses in the UK can be broadly split into three periods. Number one is the period up to the 31st of December 2020. Secondly, the 1st of January 21 to the 30th of June 2021, known as the transitional period. And finally, the 1st of July 2021 onwards. Now, there's no need to fret about what used to happen up to the 31st of December 2020. This era has now come and gone. What you need to focus on as an e-commerce trader is a six month transitional period between the 1st of January 21 and the 30th of June 21. And then finally, what happens after the 1st of July 2021. We're not going to go into depth on this in this video, but be sure to head over to our website where we've done a useful article on these three periods summarize in a handy table. Whether or not your e-commerce business is operating under a sole trader or a limited company setup, you will still need to register for and complete a self-assessment tax return. As a sole trader, it is required to report any profits or even losses via the self-assessment system, as well as any other sources of income. Income tax will then be payable on the business profits at a rate that is decided based on the individual's total income. And if your business has generated losses, then these are not wasted and can be utilized. As a limited company setup, if you are the director of a limited company, you will be required to register for and complete a self-assessment tax return, especially if you are looking to take dividends out of your company. Unlike the sole trader though, the business's profits will not be taxed under the income tax regime, but instead corporation tax. And if your business is profitable, then any dividends paid out from the company to the shareholders, which is more than likely to include you, the business owner, they will need to be declared on your personal self-assessment return. 
I hope this video has helped you understand the five main accounting and reporting requirements for an e-commerce business and taking you one step closer to knowing your numbers. As always, let me know in the comments your thoughts on today's video or if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Finally, be sure to like and subscribe as this really does help us to get our content out there. This is Tony D'Angelo for the Accounting and Tax Academy. Thanks for tuning in.